Okay friends, it's time to get started on our job. One of the first things you want to do is safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so the wheels off the ground. After that, remove all five of your 19 millimeter lug nuts and then the wheel. Now the next thing we're going to do is come right along this area right here and locate the jam nut. We're going to use a 22 millimeter wrench or a 7 8 and just go ahead and break this free. Once that's broken free, let's move along to the nut for the outer tie rod end. To remove the nut, first we're going to remove the locking cotter pin. Let's use a 19 millimeter socket to remove our outer tie rod end nut. Now the next thing we're going to do is continue on by breaking the outer tie rod end free from the knuckle. What we need to do at this point is continue on by unscrewing this. While we're unscrewing it, we're going to count the amount of turns to completely remove it from the inner tie rod end. If it feels like the inner tie rod wants to spin, I always just use some locking pliers on it. That'll hold it for me. Now we can continue on with our count. One, two, and so on. All right, write that number down. All right, make sure your locking pliers are on your inner tie rod end to hold it still. We'll continue on by removing our 22 millimeter nut. All right, now we can go ahead and start removing the bellows boot from this. Typically, there's gonna be some sort of clamp along the outer aspect right here. Generally, you can go ahead and squeeze it with some pliers, pull it right down and off of there. And then if you were to follow the bellows boot in towards where the power steering rack is, there should be another clamp in there. Our bellows boot, in general, is in very poor condition, so it doesn't have any of the clips and it's ripped. Go ahead and remove those clamps. After that, we're going to go ahead and grab onto this. We'll give it a little tug and remove it from the vehicle. Obviously, if your boot looks like this, it only makes sense to go ahead and replace it. Now, to minimize the greasy mess, I'm going to go ahead and wipe down this entire area along here, and then I'm also going to make my way up around the rack as well. Let's just try to get off some of that grease so we can continue working. Now the next thing that I always like to do is go ahead and turn the steering wheel so it brings the inner tie rod end out as far as possible so I have better access to start removing it. Now there's going to be several tools that you can use to remove inner tie rod end tools. This is one that I have. Essentially it's just going to go right around it. It's going to clamp on nice and tight. We'll turn it counterclockwise to start removing this. Once it's broken free, you can go ahead and remove your tool. Unscrew the inner tie rod end from your power steering rack. There it is, friends. Now let's go ahead and wipe down this area that we removed the inner tie rod end from. Now we can get ready to install our brand new inner tie rod end. Looking up here, you can tell that I applied a thin amount of blue thread locker. You never want to use red, but blue is okay to use. Let's go ahead and put it right on here. I'm going to tighten this up by hand until it bottoms out, and then we'll go ahead and snug it up with our inner tie rod end tool. Okay, right there I can feel that it's definitely bottomed out. I'm just going to take it a teeny bit further, but I don't want to keep going to the point that I either strip my tool or, of course, break the power steering rack in any way. Let's go ahead and get the tool out of here. Now the next thing that we're going to do is continue on with the little packet of grease that you found in with the inner tie rod end. We're going to go ahead and pack this area where there's a ball and socket with some grease and work it around a little bit. Let's also use a little bit more of that grease and we're going to come right to the shaft of the inner tie rod end where you can see there's a little bezel. Let's just go ahead and put some of this on there. That's going to help the alignment professional in the end. All right, now it's time to install our bellows boot. Now, if you don't have a specific clamp for it, you can just go ahead and use some wire ties. We're just going to go ahead and put it right around this and we're going to leave it nice and loose. 
Now at this point, we're gonna carefully slide this part right up and onto the power steering rack deep down inside. Make sure the bellows boot is all the way up against the power steering rack as far as it can and it's completely situated. After that, go ahead and apply your clamp. Go ahead and tighten up that wire tie back there. Trim off the excess. Dispose of that properly. Now we're going to take the bellows boot, slide it down here into position, put on the outer clamp. Now we're going to apply some copper never seize to the threaded area of the inner tie rod end. Install your jam nut. We're going to put this approximately halfway. Now we're going to go ahead and put on the outer tie rod end. Let's go ahead and get it started. Once it's started on there, we're going to go ahead and reinstall it the same amount of turns that it took to remove it originally. One, two, three, and so on. All right, once you feel as though it's all the way on there, let's go ahead and get this lined up with the uh, knuckle here. Go ahead and press it right down in there. Take the jam nut, get this in position. We'll come back to tighten this in one second. Let's get under here. We'll go ahead and take that nut, start that on there. Now we'll bottom this out and torque this to manufacturer specification. Torque this to 63 foot-pounds. Once you have this torqued, the next thing that you're going to want to do is line up the slot that's on the nut with the corresponding hole in the stud. If for some reason it doesn't look like it's lined up, you need to continue tightening this nut until the very next slot does. Let's go ahead and get the cotter pin through there. Make sure you pin it over to lock it in. Now we can make our way back here to the jam nut. Before you go ahead and tighten this, go ahead and hold on to the outer tie rod end so while you're tightening the jam nut, it doesn't twist the tie rod end. Use my 21 wrench for this. Okay, make sure that's nice and tight. After that, just pay attention to the tie rod end. You want to make sure it's nice and level with the ground and it's not off kilter. If it is, just go ahead and grab onto it, give it a little wiggle until it's in position. All right, so now we can go ahead and get the wheel on here. We're going to start on all five of our lug nuts. We'll bottom them out, get the wheel back on the ground, and torque each of them to 100 foot-pounds. With the wheel back firmly on the ground, we can go ahead and torque these to 100 foot-pounds. 